We got a 2013 Lincoln MKX here. I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, front and rear brakes on this thing. I'm only going to film the uh, the rear. I'll uh, I'll show the front if there's something weird or something goes on. Uh, I'm going to be doing the pads and the rotors. Um, this vehicle, I verified it does have a pulsation when you brake. So most likely that's due to uh, disc thickness variations in the rotors. So that's why I'll be replacing the rotors. And the uh, the dealer told the owner that the uh, rear brakes are getting low. So we'll, uh, we'll see if that's really the case. So come along, I'll show you how I do it. And while I'm thinking of it, here's the parts, or some of the parts. This is for the front. These are the rotors for the front. And then those are your brake pads for the front. And then uh, these are the rears. So I'm, I'm using all Ford Motorcraft on the front. And in the back, I'm going to use Ford uh, brake pads. They'll be here later today. And then uh, I'll use these Centric Premium brake rotors. I couldn't get the uh, Ford for the rear. But I've had real good luck with these Centric uh, rotors. So I'm going to go with those on this vehicle. And you can see on the front pads, at least these from Ford, come with the shims and they come with the uh, anti-rattle clips so everything you need is here which is good we'll see if the rears also come that way there is your Ford Motorcraft part number right there for the rear brakes and these, blue, these pads come with the uh, anti-rattle clips which is good so we'll be using new uh, rattle clips well, I figured I'd show you this, this is the front hub there. See all this rust? This vehicle lives in the uh, rust belt. That's why there's rust everywhere. Um, you got to clean this rust off if you don't want to have your uh, your vibration come back in your brake system. So make sure to clean this rust hub or this rust off the hub and that way you'll ensure a good brake job. And there's a shot of it cleaned up and then I have um, I put a very light coat of NICs just on the flat surface, try to keep it off the threads. Now keep it, well, it'll help keep it from rusting more. Now before I jack the vehicle up and put it on jack stands, I want you to notice I have chalked the vehicle, the front tires, both of them. So that's what I do. That's what's recommended if you're gonna lift the rear of the vehicle. And if you look at this vehicle, you come right down here, I'm behind the passenger or right rear. See that arrow right there? That tells you where to put your jack stands. Or it's also a lift point right here. That's the strong part right there. So we're going to put the jack stand right there. But Ford, in its infinite wisdom, did not give us a lift point in case uh, we want to actually put the jack stand there. Because if you put the jack here, you can't put the jack stand there. And I'm not getting under a vehicle without jack stands. So I'm going to show you where I'm going to place the jack so that I can put the stands under here. Yeah, I don't want to rant too much about Fords, but I hate that they don't tell you in the manual or anywhere else where else you can lift the vehicle. I guess they expect that you have a two post lift and that the only time you're going to lift the vehicle is with an emergency jack that's located in the, with the uh, spare tire or on a two post lift. But, in any event, right under the rear spring, that's where I'm placing the jack. Uh, it shouldn't do any damage, but if I do, well then I'm going to have to fix it. So, you want to do this, you do it at your own risk, because you, you do take a chance of bending or breaking something. But, once again, thank you Ford for making me do this. And now that I have it safely on jack stands, I'll go ahead and take the wheels off. Just remember, if you don't have an impact wrench like I do, then you're going to need to break these uh, lug nuts loose while the tire is still touching the ground. Just break them loose a little bit, then you can raise it the rest of the way and then take them off. And as you can see, no damage to the suspension. And if you do it right, when you put your jack right there, or jack stands where it goes, you won't bend them. Even without anything, you can see, it'll be just fine. Because I got both sides even, 
where uh, where these things start bending is when you start lifting it with a jack on one side and the vehicle starts going up cockeyed like that that's when these things bend so just be aware of that all right now that I got the wheel off I guess I'll go ahead and film this rear brake uh, here's some of the tools you need various fluids and hand tools I'm going to use my impact wrench where I can uh, I'll use the die grinder to get the rust off this is a this is a rust belt vehicle they're just down here visiting and they will be uh, returning to the rust belt so we'll have some rust to deal with um, the one tool you will need I recommend you're gonna need uh, a tool to push the caliper in like this one I don't even remember who makes this one who makes this one uh, this one is bet tool there's your part number right there. In any event, this is what it looks like. Um, from what I've researched, if you get a similar setup like this, they're all made by the same company in Taiwan. So you buy one, you buy them all. So, But you'll need something like this. <clears throat> because on these rear brakes, they have to use uh, or put the parking brake somewhere. Here's your parking brake cable right there. Um, Make sure your parking brake is off too when you're doing the rear brakes. Um, there's two designs. You can put a shoe and drum combination behind the rotor in the middle here. And I guess on these, this is the same as a Ford Edge, this uh, MDX. And on the older ones, I believe 2010 and earlier, they had the uh, shoe inside the rotor here as a like a old style drum brake type. And then on the newer design, and a lot of Hondas are this way, they put the uh, emergency brake as part of the caliper. And so because of that, you have to use the special tool to twist the caliper back in instead of, or the piston, to twist it in instead of just pushing it in. You try to just push it in, it's not going to go in. Um, so all right, let's get started. Now, one of the things you're going to have to do if you're replacing the rotors is you got to get that bolt out of there. That is a Torx T40, and uh, if you use an impact, you can just run it right out, just like that, which makes it nice, and you can see that thing's rusty. Um, we will be putting some anti-seize when we put this back in. Um, if you don't do that, when, uh, when you try to twist it with a, a wrench, it's just going to spin your uh, your whole assembly there so what you can do is before you take this apart have an assistant go step on the brakes and then you can pop these out before you start taking anything apart um, don't press on the brakes with this thing disconnected so make sure both sides need to be connected if you're going to do it that way otherwise you've got to put like a pry bar or something in between the studs here but you take a chance on damaging the studs so i'm not a fan of that or you can just use an impact like i do hey it's an excuse to go buy new tools right and while I'm thinking of it, brake designers are always thinking of ways to design brakes to not make noise. Disc brakes, notoriously, one of the disadvantages of them is they make noise. And it's all through vibration. And so if you notice this big old contraption right here, this is uh, basically a noise deadening device to uh, isolate vibration. So. You can take this off. You need a Torx bit. I believe it's a Torx bit. You pop the cover off the back and then uh, you can go in and twist it off and it'll twist off right here. But if, you're, if you don't need to mess with it, don't. Take a chance of breaking it. What we're going to do is I'm going to just put a 13 millimeter wrench. I'll use a line wrench. We'll put it right there and we'll break it free. And then we'll just use a normal socket right here to break that uh, 13 millimeter nut free. Alright, I'm just using a uh, extended socket there or a deep socket 13 millimeter we'll see if we can't get this thing loose sometimes these especially if they've been in the rust belt these things are notorious for being stuck on there pretty good ah, yep that thing's stuck on there I think we'll need a longer uh, ratchet 
and with a nice long ratchet. There we go. You can see the sucker's on there tight. Now it's loose. Now we can spin it all the way out. I'll leave it in there until we get the bottom one out. All right, now for this bottom one right here, we're gonna leave this alone. So what I found you could do, we just take our 13 millimeter line wrench, just sneak it right over the top there. And just like that. And we can break it loose just like that without damaging it. It's, bare, it's snug, but it works. You can see then, now we can twist the whole thing out just like that. So there, you don't have to mess with it. There's a cap. If you want, you can take this thing apart, but uh, I don't recommend it. You may not get it back together. And there, now we can take the caliper apart. Now, usually these things are on there. The suckers are on there tight, at least this vehicle, because you can see it's no longer attached right there. It's just stuck in there. And like I said, make sure your emergency brake is off so it's not uh, putting pressure on this thing. And you can see you can't push the piston back in like you could on a normal caliper. So <clears throat> you can just work it like this with a little pry berry, pry bar. This one is uh, OTC. It's great having a tiny little eight inch one. And this one you can hit also, which is nice. So that way you're not abusing your screwdriver. There we go. Now it's, now it's off. And if you look, there's two little, two little holes right there. One right there, one right there. And that goes with the little notch, it's the one on the back. And if you don't get that piston pushed in right and have it aligned right, then you're gonna have issues. You're gonna have a soft, soft brake pedal. It's gonna feel like you have uh, air in the line. So we'll just set this just like this for a second. And then I'll show you how we push that piston back in. Might as well do it right, right now. Right in this kit, um, you can see you got a bunch of different discs and stuff. So we'll need the plate. We'll need one of these. Um, I know for sure on the passenger side or the right side, it's right-handed threads. It'll twist in right. So you'd use this one. If it's left-handed threads, we'll have to use this one. I can't remember which way it goes. I think they're both right-handed, but we'll find out. Um, yeah, if I'm wrong, I'll just have to use the other one. And uh, yeah, if you start spinning it and it's not going in, you know you're going the wrong way. And on this one I found that the number six discs works best on this vehicle. And these are magnetic. So they just pop on just like that. And then you take your plate, put it... Come on. Of course it's hard to do it one-handed while filming. Just put the plate over it like that. Just like that. We'll put it in the caliper and just twist. Okay, there's a shot of the tool right there. Let's see if I can get it into the caliper there. So you can see the holes need to align like that. And what you do is just twist the nut. That'll back it into place. Just make sure it doesn't pop out. This is a lot easier when you're not trying to do it one-handed. And you just do that, and then now we'll just turn this, and then I'll turn the caliper um, piston back in. Um, sometimes this rubber boot likes to get bound up a little bit, so what I like to do is just put just a light, thin coat of uh, silicone paste. And I think I'll do it right now. I just use this stuff. It's also the same stuff I use on the slide pins. And uh, silicone and rubber get along really well so just a tiny bit there will allow it to slide so when it's turning it doesn't want to bind up on it
And you can see, see how that twists and binds all up? Okay, so what happened, I was starting to turn this in and the boot was just seized to the piston right there. And so what I did is I just took my pocket screwdriver, put a little bit of silicone grease, and I just went right under the boot like that, just with a little bit of silicone grease all the way around. And then when I turned it, then it didn't bind up anymore. So sometimes it'll do that, especially in rusty vehicles like this one. A little bit of silicone will uh, help you out. So now we should be able to just uh, twist it back in. Sometimes they're a little difficult. All right, so we'll just twist this. Keep twisting and it'll push it back in. Now I should mention that I already removed the cap off the master cylinder to allow it to uh, rise back up. And uh, just be sure to keep an eye on your master cylinder so it doesn't overflow. As long as nobody's put any fluid in there, um, it should just go right back up to the full level. And um, if, you're, uh, if your fluid's really dirty, you may want to flush it before you do this. Or you may want to crack the bleeder open on, the, uh, on this caliper here while you're pushing it back in and let the bad fluid out. This fluid's clean so I'm not worried about it, but uh, be aware of it. You can mess up your master cylinder if you're pushing dirty, nasty stuff back through your system. And I usually like to leave it sticking out about an eighth of an inch from the boot. Um, we'll see. If we need to back it down just a bit further, I will, once we put the new pads on. but. Make sure that those are perpendicular to your caliper like that, and you'll be good to go. And seeing as I got it right here, make sure this top of this piston is clean, and these bosses right here, we'll clean those up. And just use a wire brush, and just make sure all the crap is off of them. And we'll put just a dab of uh, brake lube on the face of the piston here and right here on the contact. That way this is now good to go. And I'll just use a hook. There, we'll just hang it like that. Just a thin coating, so if you got too much, wipe it off. And that's what I'm using. Ceramic Extreme from Permatex Brake Parts Lubricant. Right now, I don't know if I'll be able to show you. We're going to pull off this bolt right here and this bolt right here. I think they're 15s. Let's check it. Yep, 15 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and knock those off. Right. We'll go ahead and break those loose. These usually have Loctite on them, so they're usually on there pretty good. That one broke loose. Let's try the bottom one. Yeah, these are pretty tight. Definitely helps to have a longer, longer ratchet. Also helps to have power tools.
like I suspected, blue Loctite. So we'll be sure to put some blue Loctite back on there. Once you do that, the whole assembly with the brake pads should come right off. And while we're here, let's get this rotor off. You're going to need a hammer, and I recommend safety glasses. Look at all that rust. Look at that crap. Yeah, just a little rusty. There you go. So you take it off. Just hit it right here. It'll come off. Alright, now I'm going to take my angle die grinder with some... Here's a setup I'm going to use. Angle die grinder with some 3M rough course rust remover. And then this one is to go over like that and clean them. I think this is from... Uh, what is that? OTC I think makes this one, but I think 3M makes one also. So I'm just going to clean up like that. I'm going to switch out and do that. I'll just, there's a lip here, so this is recessed down. So this is the high point and this is the high point right here, and that's what makes contact with the rotor. Because if you look on, on the back side of the rotor, it's the same way, it's also recessed. So this doesn't even come in contact with anything. Um, so we just got to knock down all the surface rust right here and just get as much as we can. It's impossible to get everything. But just do your best to get what you can. Back up. And now that we've got it cleaned up pretty good, good enough, we'll put some anti-seize on here. That way this hopefully it won't happen again. Just a very light coat. This stuff gets everywhere, goes everywhere, and goes a long way. Don't use a ton. Try not to get it on the threads. Inevitably, you will get it on a little bit on the threads. Make sure you get it off. All right, here's the new rotor. You can see it's, it's like they got. Uh, usually, use a little bit of oil on here. What I'll do is I'll take some brake clean. Spray it on a clean rag and uh, we'll clean that. Just the surface right here, we'll clean that up and we'll get it put on the car. Alright, there it is, all nice and clean. And with some clean gloves, well, pretty clean, uh, we'll go ahead and set it back on there. As you notice, this one, these premium ones from Centric, uh, they're all painted black. So hopefully that'll let them last a little bit longer not uh, rust up quite so much um, just make sure you gotta get on this case there's tons of these little holes for the uh, mounting screw just make sure you get it lined up in the right spot tiny bit of anti-seize on the threads of this screw And 
whoever takes it off next will thank us. I always recommend starting your screws by hand. Alright, now what we'll do is pop these brake pads out. Let's see what they look like, seeing as the dealer told them they were almost ready. Yeah, I wouldn't say they were almost ready, but they're definitely all rusted up and crap. And the brakes are vibrating, so might as well just do it and get it done with and get it done right. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to clean these up right here. And um, we'll also clean the back. I'll clean the back where this mounts to the to the assembly there and then we'll pop all these clips off and we'll put brand new ones on. Good enough. All right, go ahead and pop these old clips off. Uh, it's recommended you replace these anti-rattle clips. Um, I know I've reused them before, but these are in bad shape. If they're in really good shape, I suppose you can get away with doing it, because I know I have. But, it's recommended you replace them. So, that's what we're going to do. But first, we will uh, we'll take a wire brush and we'll clean these as best we can. Not bad. I'm also going to hit it with the wire wheel. Alright, now with some clean gloves, we'll go ahead and get this caliper put back together. Um, I like to take my my uh, brake grease here and I just put a thin coat on the front and backs of these just a tiny bit. Just enough to get it coated front and back. That's it. And then we get it snapped into place. Just remember the flat part, not the part that sticks out like that. It goes to the inside. So they snap in just like that. So two will go one direction, two will go the other way. Just like that, snap them all in. And then we'll pull the slide pins out. And clean them off. And on these, let's take and put a light coat, silicone paste. You can use brake grease too, but I like silicone paste for slide pins. And on these, make sure they're kind of in the neutral position.
You don't have to glob it on there, but you definitely want to make sure it's coated. There, make sure they move freely. Now it's ready to install. And Ford loves thread locker on these bolts, so we'll do what they like. Just a little bit. A little dab will do. You want the blue stuff, medium. We'll just get it back up into place and get our bolts started by hand. Once you get them started by hand, then you can nail them down. While I'm thinking of it, we'll make sure it's torqued down. 66 foot bounds for, for both of these caliper bolts in the back here. There, torque to spec. All right, with clean gloves. Go ahead and put our brake pads in. Um, they're the same, no difference in the pads, so you can't get them wrong. Um, we'll just go ahead and pop them in one at a time. And because I put um, brake grease on these uh, anti-rattle clips and the uh, on the caliper there, no need to put them on on the pads. Take our brake caliper and we'll see if we can't slide it right over. See if we uh, put it in correctly. And you can see there's basically no more space in there, so we had it backed off correctly. If it won't go in, you're having trouble, stop take it off you might have to back that piston back in a little more I'm not using any Loctite on these bolts these are hard enough to get off as it is remember start them by hand I'll take our big contraption here and do the same thing. I'll tighten it up the same way. Now these bolts are only torqued to 19 foot-pounds, so you don't have to go too hard. As you can see, I can't get a torque wrench on there, so that felt like 19 to me. I'm 
Now I always take a second and look over my work for a bolt, uh, put the tire back on. I like to touch everything. That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. Two caliper bolts are tight. And that's it. And everything looks good. That's lined up with the pin. Brakes are on the correct way with the friction material to the inside. Alright, we'll get the tire back on and we'll get it torqued down to 100 foot pounds, which is the uh, spec for this, or for these lug nuts. And is, if you can see, it's a 100 pound, 100 foot pound uh, torque stick right here. I'll be using to torque them down. Now we'll uh, go here, and you can see brake fluid is right at the max. It's perfect, so it's right back where it should be. So we'll put the we'll put the cap back on. As you can see, Ford was kind enough to put the cap right under here. So you use have to use a small cup or a funnel or something if you need to add brake fluid. The next thing I'll do is. Uh, I'll make sure, pump up the brakes, get a good firm foot feel on the pedal. That feels pretty good right there. And there, I ended up putting all four brakes in here. Well, while I'm thinking of it, we'll pull the chocks off the wheels. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take it for uh, a quick little test drive. Um, I always start off really slow, make sure the brakes start working. And then uh, I'll do a series of stops from like 30 miles an hour or so down to 5 miles an hour without stopping. I'll do that several times uh, to get these brakes all um, bedded into the uh, rotor so that way they're all mated correctly. Um, that's usually the process I do so that way, uh, that way the brakes work properly and uh, your rotors, it, those brake pads set into the rotors nicely so you don't get any high spots which causes disc thickness variations. Um, I got another Honda I gotta do. Maybe I'll film that one. The front rotors are bad because of that and maybe I'll go into more depth of what happens. But in any event, that's what it's like to do the uh, to do the rear brakes on this, uh, what is this? Oh, it's a Lincoln. Lincoln uh, MDX, right? I think that's what it is. Same as a Ford Edge 2013. I believe this uh, this would cover 2011 to 2015. I believe that's that's the year that uses this style. I could be wrong by a little bit, but should be okay. In any event, hey, you know the deal. If this video helps you out. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.